let's talk a little bit about the sort of difference between native wind and tailwind. I, I think a lot of our listeners will know what tailwind is and be familiar with it, but what, what are the changes that you had to make or how did, why was this necessary to build when tailwind exists in the React Native world? Yeah, so native wind can be thought of largely as a giant mapping function, right? You, you have the way styles are handled on mobile in general, which differs from web. Then you also have the fact that React Native just does things differently than, say, React. And so you have to account for those differences. So you have this giant mapping function that's going to try to the web descriptors that are coming to us from Tailwind World, right? And you're trying to properly map those to their equivalents on the native level. Then the other side of that is addressing the edge cases. And an example of one of those edge cases is, what is it, REM font sizing and stuff like that is like a very nuanced difference, but it'll throw you off because you'll go into web and the same code you've written in, that's rendering on web is going to be different than on mobile. And that'll initially be like, I, something's broken here. And in fact, that's just in something upstream in, in React Native itself. You're always trying to find what subset of functionality, CSS-wise, you want to include in the styling library without hindering performance too much while simultaneously addressing this, these edge cases, right? Whereas if you're simply rendering on web, it's just going to serve as a one-to-one -one mapping, and there's no difference there. So working on it then for Mark and myself and any of the other contributors really just comes down to, on an abstract level, this balancing act, right? Because you can't include everything. And if you can't do that, then what do you include? And to what extent? And what does that look like? The things you were talking about adding there were like CSS features, right? Because when you're using Tailwind, you have like hovers and all of these other things. So you're talking about what things you actually choose to implement because those don't exist in React Native, right? Exactly. And there's a lot of assumption on what does that mean? What does hover mean on Native? Further, we just included animations and trans like transitions with version four. What does that look like? Like, how do people interact with animations and what are their expectations? What does it look like when they chain animations together and what are their expectations there? Are they passing by value or are they passing by percentage? All of these different kinds of, it's a perpetual iterative process to try to understand more, more of the behavioral aspect. Like, what is the experience people are looking for? And then we double back and we make it perform it, right? We make it like something you really want to use and ideally really can't operate without. Then we make it, that's our approach. What are the biggest performance issues here? So, so you've hinted to just like rendering performance, trying to replicate CSS-like behaviors in a native context, which may require extra steps. But what, is, what are the other things that or like, what was the biggest bottlenecks? What was the biggest challenges that you had to face? So I think the biggest challenge, so again, like from contrasting with working on Tamagui stuff, and again, very loose, like I did very little there, but just on a surface level, there isn't really an optimized compiler with native Wind yet, at least. And so you're going to, native Wind's going to do really poorly or perform very poorly on these sort of benchmark tests where you're testing like a thousand list items or something with a GIF in them. And you can even argue the, what do you call it? The efficacy or something or the effectiveness of testing in that way. But we're very much focused, like I said, on creating the proper experience and then doubling back to the performance. And a lot of that performance suffers simply because in, you're including stuff that just doesn't need to be there, that isn't being utilized, or perhaps even the output file that you're generating has more text in it in some key value object than it needs to have. A lot of the performance improvements included in version four stemmed from simply changing a word starting with D to just the letter D. But there was just many instances of that. So there's minor things like that. There's larger changes to be had. We're currently working on a more like pure native wind variant that we see as like the first step in a much more performant library. We have a lot of plans in the coming months that now that we have version four out, we can take those risks, right? We have something that we can give people that's more stable, 
that they can use so that we can really get more experimental with that performance aspect. What is this pure version that you're talking about? How does that change things? So to be honest, I haven't quite fully read through it. Mark just shared it with me and he was like, here's this thing. And it includes some of the stuff, right? It includes some of what Native Wind covers and it doesn't include other things. He shared it with me as a sort of precursor to something that could be utilized for folks maintaining component libraries. So like Gluestack, if you wanted to use Native Wind as your underlying engine, so to speak, then you don't have to adopt the bloat that would come with it that you're not going to utilize anyways. And so it's almost like this minified version of the project. I'm pretty sure it might even be public. So if anyone wanted to look through it, I think it's published under like native wind forward slash native wind dash pure. But the goal is to like dial back and where version four was, let's throw a bunch of stuff in here. And then tr as we add more things, try to make everything work together. The pure version is let's introduce let's introduce a minified version of it so that we can intentionally then layer in the other stuff as necessary. And that way we can control better for any performance hits that you might incur while using it for your project. Performance in React Native inherently is a pretty weird thing because it already React Native by nature is already including a lot of stuff that you just don't need. Yeah, it's my journey in Native Wind has predominantly been one of learning more about bundlers. I think any person who jumps into dev tooling is eventually just going to get to that layer and you have a decision to make of are you wanting, do you want to go deeper into the world of ASTs? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is for that for me yet, but it's increasingly becoming like the the thing. Have you guys had to like grapple with a bunch of different bundlers? Does Native Win only support Metro out of the box or something? Yeah, yeah. So I get this question <laughs> a lot, right? Like you have, because right now everyone's, there's all these different bundlers and stuff and you got Vite and Repack and Metro and stuff. And Metro is its own whole thing that has both a human level challenge. And then there's like, technical challenges. The reason it was even introduced in the first place is very different than like why the React Native community is using it kind of thing. And Native Wind supports Metro out of the box. That is our intention. We're going to continue to do that. It's not to say that Native Wind can't work with Vite or other bundlers for that fact, but aren't going to offer support for it. And something that I think about pretty frequently as a maintainer is how do you not just turn people away from that? Because I get that a lot of people who are going to want to use, say, Vite are not going to actually be willing to put forth the work themselves in order to make that happen. But there's going to be people out there who are willing. And I don't want to turn them away. Like, I'd, really, I'd rather this kind of tool set work for as many people as possible. So what does it look like? What does it look like to empower those people, but simultaneously tell them, like, look, we got a lot on our plate. We can't do all of this. And Metro, by the way, is not great to support. Its flexibility comes at a tremendous cost. And a lot of that cost is sweat, talent, and blood, which is why I respect folks like Evan Bacon as much as I do. You look at the Expo team, the software engineers over there, which I very fortunately had some, I had the opportunity to spend some time there. All of us have in our work moments where we don't know what's like a task is put in front of us. We have no idea how this is going to work. But a lot of the time we do, and we're just executing on work. At Expo, every single thing you do is one of those, like you have no idea, like just go figure it out. And it was a weird kind of dynamic to jump into. You know what I mean? Where it's just, like, just try it, figure it out. And that's why you're here. Yeah, it seems like native is a hard platform to develop for. Like I myself am a web developer, but anytime I've tried to dip my toe in some iOS development, like the docs are just like inscrutable, like they're yeah. everywhere. It, it seems like there's not enough. People tell me to go like watch videos from like keynotes and it just like it like the this is a black box and it shouldn't be and it baffles me. I struggle with this so much because people will ask me, especially because I've had experience my initial experience with mobile development is native iOS, like Objective-C and Swift. And people ask me like, oh, what is the best way to build apps? And what do you think of React Native? And I'm like, it's shit. <laughs> it sucks. It's not great. Like, I, I, I think it's going to be really good in a year or two. 
And I think that Expo fills in a lot of the gaps, right? But I feel like I've been saying that for quite some time. And, and I'm always reminded of this guy, David. His last name is French and I cannot pronounce it, but he posted a gift to Twitter at one point, which was that scene where from the Tom Cruise movie where he's in like a mech suit and he lands on the beach and he's just like trying to survive an onslaught of things that are trying to kill him. And then the, unless you know what you're stepping into, React Native is a really tough spot to exist in. Whereas iOS, albeit slow, it always felt like there was the supported way to deal with it. Okay, like Realm is better, but core data exists and it's going to exist for a while. So if you know how to use core data, then you're good to go. I, I, have, I experienced an enormous amount of tool fatigue in the JavaScript ecosystem, the React ecosystem, and the React Native ecosystem so quickly. Like Mark and I were talking about Biome the other day. Someone on stream mentioned, hey, have you tried Biome? And I'm like, frankly, I don't care if it's better anymore because I've been using this stuff for so long that I would just be so exhausted to have to try something else. And it's why I deeply admire tools like Unistyles, if you guys have had a chance to try that at all. Unistyles is really cool by its design because you don't really have to do anything beyond styling in React Native as you normally do. It just empowers you to do more, right? And if you want to rip that out, you're like, this isn't for me. It's not this whole rigmarole. It doesn't become this month-long, two-month-long project. You just yarn, uninstall, unistyles. And for the most part, that's it. Go use whatever you want. And I love that. I want more people to entertain stuff like that. Native Wind is not like that. I don't see it becoming like that. It truly does require you to adopt a different mode of thinking than React Native provides out of the box. And to sort of circle then back around to, I think, Justin, something you were asking is, I think one of the biggest challenges of React Native in contrast like if you came into mobile development through React Native, I feel bad for you because it doesn't, React Native that is, provide a straightforward path by which to understand how to even create that native feeling experience. And I think that's so much of what is lacking. And a lot of the tools that I then build, small or large, are just in an effort to bridge that gap. 